Good day, everyone. I'm Arnold Kinabo. My fellow authors are Dr. Joyce Mongama and Professor Albert Lisko. I present to you our paper titled An Overview of Time-Sensitive Communications for the Factory Floor. The focus of our research is on time-sensitive communications in the industrial Internet of Things. I will begin by introducing industry as a use case for IoT, or the Internet of Things. I will introduce the need for determinism and the motivation for technologies that provide this determinism. I'll present the technologies available for factory floor communications, after which I'll compare their performance. I will present TSN and OPC UA as new age technologies before I conclude my presentation. The Internet of Things has a number of verticals of which industry is among the fastest growing, that is industrial IoT or IIoT. Industry 4.0 is simply the subspace of the fourth industrial revolution that pertains to industries. Its products and services are expected to grow from $119 billion in 2020 to $310 billion in 2023. The African markets are not immune to this disruption and they will variably be affected. It's just a matter of how prepared they are to embrace the technology, including what aspects to consider in its adoption. But what exactly is special about IoT in industry or the factory floor? Well, its devices need an increased level of coordination in the way events are scheduled to occur. An example is in factory floor automation, in vehicle manufacturing plants, for example. Our automotive industry is growing with new assembly facilities set up in Rwanda and more recently, like last year, in Ghana, for example. The next technological step for these would be to automate their machinery. Now, if a vehicle from such a plant had one of its parts put in at the wrong time, it would create a major problem in the production line whose effect would only get likely get multiplied in time. So you can see how reliable time synchronization is a big concern in mission critical applications. Given the changes in technology over the years, it is useful for factory managers and pr prospective industrialists to know what conventional methods are being successfully implemented, as well as what to look out for in future. And that is what this paper will look into. Before reviewing the technologies, it is good to know the factors that motivated the development. Machines on the factory floor are constantly sending signals back and forth. Initially, they used TCP, IP, and GDP over controllers to communicate to sensors and actuators, but these protocols were not able to deliver deterministic real-time responses. A new technology was needed that could deliver the determinism required for plant-level automation. This new technology needed to be fast, with a delay ranging from under 1 millisecond to 10 milliseconds. It needed to have a low overall cost and it also needed to deliver a greater performance. Being highly reliable was an inferred and primary requirement for these mission critical and time sensitive applications. Other non-technical factors also came into play, such as the level of conformance to standards, its interoperability, and its openness generally. Ethernet provided the answer, because using standard Ethernet meant that the solution could be built off common hardware of whose design could save the company in excess of 50% compared to those older configurations. This gave way to the rise of many field bus technologies, which we shall now get into. There are over 30 industrial ethernet technologies in existence. The major ones though are built on open standards. Most others aren't. We begin our review with Profinet or Process Field Network a 100% switched Ethernet protocol that seeks to address factory automation. It is an open standard developed and maintained by the Profinet International Group. Profinet can be scaled to meet different functional requirements by the combination of conformance classes which are built upon one another in increasing layers to extend each other's functionality. Profinet has three versions. Version 1 is based on conformance class A or CCA with best effort principles no determinism. Version two on conformance class B or CCB with soft real-time or profinite real-time. And version three 
conformance class C with profinite isochronous real time. May it be noted that a soft real time system is less restrictive than a hard real time system. In a hard real time system, we have higher performance metrics and much shorter delays. Next, we have Ethernet IP, of which the IP stands for Industrial Protocol. It is an industrial network solution for providing uh, manufacturing process automation by employing the Common Industrial Protocol, or CIP. CIP is so named because it provides both a common data organization and a common messaging for control, for control systems in industry. Its advantages include the fact that it uses all the transport and control protocols of traditional Ethernet, such as TCP and IP, and media access and signaling technologies from common off-the-shelf Ethernet interface cards. A range of devices can be accessed using one common mechanism. And lastly, it requires no special hardware because it is simply an application layer protocol sitting on standard Ethernet and TCP IP. Serial Real-Time Communication System, or CIRCOS, CIRCOS 3, is the third generation of the CIRCOS interface. It follows the master-slave structure in that you have a master node which is connected to its slaves in a logical ring topology over standard Ethernet cable. CIRCOS incorporates the summation frames principle. When a frame moves from slave device to slave device, it may get filled with the data at these devices in a sort of summing effect. So, and once it's at its maximum, additional information is appended to another frame. The technology supports both cyclic and acyclic communication, that is um, deterministic or scheduled and best effort communication. Fourth is Ethicat or Ethernet for Control Automation Technology. It's another master-slave arrangement that caters for hard and soft real-time computing. It shares many of the features of CIRCOS 3. Frames are still processed on the fly by slaves, but with the use of special slave controllers that can be implemented in different options such as uh, FPGAs or Field Programmable Gate Arrays, ASICs or application-specific integrated circuits, or as microcontrollers. Fifth is the Open Platform Communications Unified Architecture, which is a protocol maintained by the OPC Foundation. It transports data in two ways. Firstly, through the client server model, and secondly, through its own OPC UA pub sub model, which is publish and subscribe. The client server mechanism follows a request and response pattern to access information from the server. In the pub sub model, a publish subscribe pattern is used. So receivers would subscribe to the servers or publishers that they want to receive information from, and they'll automatically be informed of updates to the publisher's data. It is also vendor independent and it works in the higher production levels, while other industrial Ethernet communication protocols work on the communication space at the field level. With PubSub, OPC UA is used alongside TSN to extend its standards down to the field level devices. We shall now briefly discuss this TSN. IEEE 802.1 TSN, or Time Sensitive Networking, is a set of Ethernet standards formed by the TSN task group to guarantee deterministic messaging and quality of service for real-time applications. In this collection of standards, we have the main ones such as 802.1AS for timing and synchronization between TSN bridges, QEV, to provide scheduling and time-aware shaping for different traffic types, QBU, to ensure minimal latency for critical traffic through the frame preemption mechanism, and CB, for frame replication and elimination for reliability. There are alternatives to TSN, which also aim for determinism, such as the Internet Engineering Task Force's Deterministic Networking Standard, or IETF DETNET in short. But in comparison to TSN's own standards, many of DETNET's standard documents exist as drafts in need of further development. TSN uses these standards to assure end-to-end -end latency, despite how heavy the workload gets. Now, we may look to compare across the field-level standards and technologies introduced so far. The online industrial Ethernet book presented the case where 100 axles are being controlled simultaneously over an application using the traditional field bus technologies. The table provides the results from this experiment as relates to the cycle response time 
and the jitter. TSN as a relative newcomer was left out, though it will be dealt with in the next section. Maybe noted that for most real-time applications on the plant floor, a delay of uh, one millisecond to 10 milliseconds is suitable. In the comparison that followed, Ethicad came out as the most capable technology. The drawback though of using these traditional field buses is that they are non-interoperable and they're incompatible with one another. TSN as a standard can integrate with and work alongside them. Furthermore, it is vendor agnostic and so it allows interoperability between standard conformant TSN devices from any vendor. The smart factory of the future will have determinism at the helm of all its activities. So whichever method is chosen by the client, it should be able to provide this. Admittedly, our local industries are still away from smart factories. It is still good though to consider what technologies are available for the future and for transformation. This work seeks to provide a baseline for this. TSN and OPC UA are used together to provide interoperation from plant level to higher production levels. We hope in future to provide use cases for the technologies we presented to illustrate more precisely how they can be used in an African context. Through this, we can paint a clearer picture on the application. These may serve to further advise those seeking to adopt or who are already adopting them. Thank you. We now welcome your questions.